Hello, my name is Sean Wilkesmore from Colton RV. I would like to congratulate you on your purchase of your 2015 Phaeton 40 QBH. I'm gonna be doing your walk around with you today. Uh, we're gonna start on the outside and when we're done, we're gonna work our way to the inside. Uh, so we're gonna start right here at the entryway. You have your entry door here. It's gonna pull to release it. And when you go to close it, you have to flip the handle up on the inside to get the door at the top to release to be able to close the door. You have a uh, ent entry door awning up above. There's a switch right in here inside the door. It's going to say extend or retract. So to open it, we're just going to hit extend. And then to put it away, we're just gonna hit retract. You have a patio awning located right on your slide out. The switch for that is gonna be above the driver's seat in the cabinet. All you're gonna do is turn it on and hold it to extend or to retract. Oh, and then all you got to do is retract it. And then you also have a switch inside the entry door that'll turn the step on and off. If the step is on, every time you open and close the door, the step will go in and out. If you turn it off, the step will stay out when you close the door. You have a diesel fuel fill right here. You can fill from either side. So there's gonna be one here and one on the other side of the coach. Located in this first compartment, you have your hydraulic pump. That's gonna work your front slide outs and your jack system. Uh, if you ever get low on fluid or have a leak on the back side, there is a little cap that you can pull off to add the hydraulic fluid. Um, right here, you have your propane tank. You're going to turn it on and off right here. When you take it to get it filled, they're going to pull this yellow cap off to fill your tank. And then you have a gauge right here. This compartment, you have storage here. And it's got a slide tray that will pull out either side. Uh, we did install a surge guard for you. I'll show you that in the other compartment, but this is the box with all the paperwork. You have a LED light. When it's to one, it'll be on all the time. Two is gonna be a motion light. So when, you, when it's on motion, when you open the door, the light will turn on. When you close the door, the light will turn off. You also have a 12 volt and a 110 outlet. Also, underneath both your slide outs and underneath the coach, we installed some boogie lights. It will change multiple colors. It does work off a remote control. You can also have it strobe, or you can also control it off your cell phone. So it's under both slide outs on the passenger side and also up underneath the motorhome. Up here on the slide out is the, furn the exterior part of your furnace for the front of the coach. It does get extremely hot, so when you're hanging out under the awning and you are running it, don't lean up against it. You will burn yourself. Uh, in this compartment here, you have your outside TV. Uh, you can play your DVD player, you can watch regular TV. If you get a satellite receiver, you can play satellite all out on this TV. When we go inside, I'll show you how the TV system works. All your TVs are going to work the same way. You have another storage compartment here that goes all the way through to the other side. Another storage compartment here with another LED light to where you can have it on or set to motion. Also in this compartment, you have your central vac. So to change the bag, there's a little lever here. You just lift up, door falls off, you can change the bag. 
And then there's also a port out here where you can hook your hose up to vacuum your compartment or if you want to use the hose to vacuum your car. And then you also have some extra floor tiles here. So if you ever break a tile in the coach, you can change it out. Located right here, you have a fresh water fill. All you're gonna do is take the cap off, stick the hose in, and fill up your tank. Uh, you can also fill from the other side through the city water hookup. When we get over there, I'll show you how to do that. On this slide out here, you have a window awning. You're gonna take your awning rod, Put it here, you're just gonna bring this out and then you can hook your strap for your window awning. Then to put it away, you always wanna use your awning rod so your strap doesn't roll up in the awning. All right, located in this compartment is your chassis starting batteries. These are gonna start your engine. Um, right here you have a battery disconnect. So if you're storing the unit for a long period of time, you can turn that off so your batteries don't drain. Also located right here are your two slide controllers for your rear slide outs. Your rear slide outs are electric, Swintech slides. So there is a blinking light on here if you have an issue. You just count how many blinks and on the board it tells you what, what issue you're having. If you're having a bad motor or shorten the wiring or something like that going on. And then just another little storage compartment here. Storage compartment here, and then in here are some fuses and relays for the chassis. Now over here, this plug is for your engine block heater. There's a switch inside to turn it on, but you can also plug it in here when the coach is plugged in or run in the generator to heat your engine to make it start easier when it's below 20 degrees. Or you can plug this directly into an extension cord and plug it into an outlet. You have a ladder here to get up on your roof. I, I recommend twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall, to get up and check your roof sealants around all your vents. You have your access to the rear part of the engine to get to your fluids. You have a air filter minder here. That's gonna let you know when you need to change your air filter. You have your power steering fluid here, engine coolant, transmission fluid, um, oil fill, oil check right here. You'll notice there's two drains here. So whenever you're running your air conditioner, you're gonna notice water's running out the back of your coach. There's pumps in your AC to pump the water to the back of the coach so it runs off the rear so it doesn't run off the side of your coach. Uh, you also have a seven-way plug and a class three receiver here if you wanna tow a car or tow a trailer. In this compartment here, you have storage. And then also, if you unscrew this panel, there's access to change the air filter for the engine. Right in here is your hot water tank. Uh, you have an anode rod here. That goes back in. Right now it's bypassed because the coach is winterized. Now there's an on-off switch right here. If this is off and you turn it on electric on the inside, it will not work. So to run your hot water tank on electric, this switch has to be on and the switch inside. Propane, you can leave this switch off, but you're also gonna turn that on in the inside of the coach. And there's just two pins here to put the door back on and then the latchet. You have another furnace here, that's for the rear of the coach. Your power cords here, it is 50 amp service. There's a power reel. And then you can just pull it out and go back in. You have your automatic transfer switch here to transfer power between the generator and the shore cord. And then right here is where we installed your uh, surge protector. When, it, when you have good power, the dog is lit up white. When you have an issue, the dog will turn, turn red. Located in the compartment over here is your DEF tank. There is a gauge on here. Uh, the biggest thing with your DEF, I'd always carry an extra two gallon jug with you. If you run out of DEF while you're traveling, get to where you're going, then shut off the coach. If you run out of fluid and you turn the coach off, it will not restart until you fill, fill up the fluid. Also, if, don't let your coach idle too long. 20 minutes at the most, anything longer than that, uh, 
mill light on the dash could come on, then you have to drive the coach for so many miles at a certain speed for so long before it to clean itself out so it'll regenerate. If it doesn't regenerate on itself, you have to have Cummins come in with a laptop and do a manual regeneration. Now this compartment is your water bay, your wet bay. Um, you do have a power hose reel. You just pull it out, hook it to the spigot. I do recommend using a water pressure regulator at the spigot, then hooking the hose up to it. Um, now right here, you have a tank flush. When you're hooked a hose right into there, it's going to spray inside the black tank to clean your tank out. So I, I recommend every time you dump your tanks to flush the back, the, do a tank flush on there. Um, right here you have cable hookup and tripod satellite hookup. This is your hot water tank bypass valve. Right now it is in bypass because it is winterized. After you've run water through the system, put the anode rod back in the hot water tank, you're going to flip this valve to normal flow so then water will fill your tank. If you're using the pump or city water, the tank will automatically fill. You have an outside shower here. And then this is your valve for city water. So whenever you're hooked up to a spigot, you want to set city water. If you're hooked up and you want to fill your fresh tank, all you're going to do is turn this to tank fill. When you're done filling your tank, go back to city water. If you leave it on tank fill, the water is just going to recirculate and you're not going to get any pressure inside. You also have a water pump switch out here. You can turn on the pump outside or inside, either, either spot. Water filter goes in here. There is a little wrench. You just put it on there to twist the filter off. This is your water pump. Two low point drains to drain your, cold, your hot water line and your cold water line. Then you have your fresh water tank drain right here. Right now the drain is open, so whenever you're gonna fill the tank, you wanna make sure you close it. Every time you're done camping, I recommend you drain the water out of your tanks so your water doesn't get stagnant. Uh, right here is your sewer hose hookup. The one with the gray handle is your sinks and shower. The black one is for your toilet water. Now you can have this valve like this so the hose can come right out the door into the dump station. Or if you're hooked up permanently at a campground, you can take this, turn it down, go out the bottom of the compartment and run the hose to the dump station. Located on the driver's side front slide is an access panel to your refrigerator. There is no vents on this because it is a residential refrigerator. And then you have another window awning located up here. Same thing, just going to take your awning rod, pull it out, hook it to the hook when you're camping. Uh, underneath here, you have another storage compartment. That just goes all the way through to the other side. Same thing with this one, just goes all the way through. And then this one has the slide tray, can come out either side. Now in this box here is the PermaPro RV cover that you purchased for your motorhome. So that's in this compartment right here. Now in this compartment here are your house batteries. You have six volt batteries. Uh, there is a battery disconnect here. Uh, right now it's on. Whenever you're plugged in, you want it on. Whenever you're running the generator, you want it on. If you're not using the coach and you're storing the coach and you're not plugged in, turn it off. If this is off, it will not charge when you are plugged in. There's a little lever here to release your batteries so you get the access to be able to check the water level. You want to make sure the water level is above the platelets. If it is, If you're plugged in for a long period of time, you're going to use the water level. It's going to drain down. Uh, all you're going to do is add some distilled water to it. You have another diesel fuel fill here. So like I said, either side. You don't have to wait in line when you pull in to get fuel. Another storage here. Now there are some resettable circuit breakers and some other fuses for the chassis in here. This is for the coach end. Now up in the corner here, there's a little lever. All you're going to do is take your hand pull and it releases the generator so now your generator comes out on the front so located up here in the front compartment you have your windshield washer fluid right here nice and easy to get to um, you also have a start stop switch for your generator now the biggest thing is if you're going from gas to diesel a gas generator as soon as you hit it you hear it start cranking a diesel 
you're gonna hold it. It's gotta preheat itself. The colder it is, the longer it takes to start. And then you can hit that to shut it off. Now here you do have a circuit breaker. Right now it's on. Whenever you run the generator, you wanna make sure that's on. Um, usually what happens is you have your air conditioners on, you unplug the unit, you forgot to turn them off, you fire the generator up. A lot of times what's gonna happen is when those go to start, it's gonna pop the breaker on the generator. So you're gonna to wanna to start right here and check that. Then when you're all done in here, whenever you're pushing this door closed, you wanna push in the middle. That now concludes the walkthrough portion of the exterior of the coach. Now we're gonna work our way to the inside. We're gonna start the inside portion of the show through in the rear of the coach in a full bathroom. Um, right here, you do have a door. You're gonna push this lever down and slide it all the way across and then back down to release it to go back. Whenever you're traveling, you wanna make sure these are latched so they're not bouncing back and forth while you're traveling down the road. Uh, you have a couple of light switches here for your bathroom and your vanity. Now the nice thing here is your ceiling vent is power. All you're going to do is hit vent lid and it's going to go up. And if you hit fan, the fan will turn on. The fan in the back bedroom is temperature regulated. And it goes in or out and three speeds. Now to put it down, when you hit the switch it will go down. The fan will shut off automatically when the vent closes. Uh, you also have a water pump switch here in the back bathroom and then panel lights. So at nighttime, if you hit this, it turns all the lights off on the panels. Located in here, you do have your washer dryer. Uh, I do recommend while you're using your washer dryer and you're hooked up at a campsite, leave the gray valve open. It does fill your tank pretty quickly uh, if you do a few different loads. All you're going to do for the washer is you're going to set what kind of load you have. You're going to put your chemicals right in here. Select your temperature, how many spins per cycle, delay start, super wash, extra rinse, and then hit start. Whatever whatever you want to do on that. Now in the dryer, all you're going to do is set the time, low heat, high heat, and hit start. You have to be running your generator or be plugged in to use these two appliances. Over here, you just got a pull out storage drawer with a little hamper, storage under the sink, and then a few more storage drawers here. And then you have your medicine cabinet up here. In here you have your rear uh, closet. Uh, there are some resettable circuit breakers here. It does tell you what they are. This is your main spider panel. All your control switches come to here. So if they're doing diagnostic on your spider system, this is where they're gonna hook up. And then these just slide and latch. The lights go out when you close the doors. There's a little micro switch right here. Um, also listed in this compartment up on the wall is all your model and serial numbers of your appliances. Located here are all your 110 circuit breakers. Everything is labeled for what it is. Now your toilet here, all you're gonna do is water saver flush or regular flush. So when the pump is on, right now it is winterized. All you're gonna do is hit flush. It's gonna add water and then drain it. Right now there is no water in the system. A little towel holder here and then storage here. Now you have your shower door here, there's a little latch. Whenever you're traveling, you want to make sure this is latched. Otherwise, all you're going to do is release that, slide the door open, and then here's your faucet, hot and cold. The nice thing is there is a little shade here that'll close, then you can open it back up. Now we're going to move on to the bedroom. Right here is located is your DVD player. Uh, your DVD player will play on every single TV. When we go up front, I'll show you how the TVs work. Uh, you can also put your satellite receiver right here. So if you go with DirecTV, Dish Network, it's going to go right here. Uh, there is a switch right here that turns the fan on here that keeps the HDMI switchers uh, from getting too hot. 
Um, if this is off, your DVD or satellite will not show on the TV. That has to be on for those to work. You have a little hamper here, a couple storage drawers here, and a couple more here. Uh, you have a fire exit window right here in the bedroom. All you're going to do, flip that, release to open the window. Now, all your windows are flush mount windows. They work a little bit different than the, the other windows. You're going to release the lever here, pull forward towards you, and then slide it. When you go to close it, you have to slide it and then push in to latch it. If you leave it out, there's going to be a gap here. So you have to push the window in to latch it into place. More storage here. Now you do have USB charging ports on both sides of the bed with storage and then storage up above. There's a sconce light on each side. Little push button here to turn them on and off. You have your bedroom light and your entry door light you can turn on here. You can turn your ceiling fan high or low. Now you have a master light switch here. So if you have all your lights on your coach, you don't want to get up to turn them all off. All you're going to do is hit off, it turns all the lights off. When you turn it on, whatever lights were on, that's what it's going to turn back on. And then you can turn your panel lights on and off. You have storage underneath the bed. Uh, right now, your central vac kit and your extra dining room chairs are located underneath the bed. Now, you do have a sleep number bed, which you're going to be they have the controller here. You have left and right. Left and right is when you're laying on the bed, right side, left side. Otherwise, if you're facing the bed and you hit left, it's actually going to fill the right side. So it's, it's when you're laying on the bed, what side you're going to do. The remote's located right here. You have another door here. Just gonna release the lever, latch it, down to open it. Your central vac port for the inside of the coach is located right here next to the bed. Over here you have your uh, propane and carbon monoxide detector right here. And then you have the thermostat for the rear of your coach located here in the bedroom. You have cool for the air conditioner, off, gas heat, which is your furnace, electric heat, electric heat, which comes out of your air conditioning. So if it's above 45 degrees, 49 degrees ish, that's when you can use electric heat. And you're going to use that to get the chill out of the air. If it's below 45, you're going to have to run your gas heat to, to warm the coach. And then all you're going to do here is set the temperature. You have your half bath located right here. Uh, the toilet in here is a foot pedal. All you're going to do is push down a little to rinse all the way down flushes. You also have a vent fan in here which you just push the button to open the vent lid and turn the fan on. And then you have a water pump switch in the half bath. And then just some storage cabinets up here with a little medicine cabinet. Now you do have a little soap dispenser here. Easiest way to fill it is you just pop this off, put a funnel in there, and pour the soap in. Otherwise, you can open up the cabinet here, and there's a little bottle up here you can untwist to fill. Now, located right here is your, your main control panel. You can do your passenger slide and your uh, driver side slide, rear slide right here. So you're going to hit extend or retract to run the slide in. To run the slides, the key has to be the ignition key has to be in the on position. Um, and then you have water heater, the lightning bolt's electric. The picture of the flame is gas. All you're gonna do is hit it to turn it on, hit it to turn it off. And then your bedroom light here. And then this is your gauges here, your black, gray, and fresh, and then your propane. It also tells you what your voltage is on your house batteries. Right now we're at 14.3 volts because when you're plugged in, you're always going to be over 13.5. Uh, you have another TV located right here with storage underneath and storage up top. Now in the compartment below the TV, we have a water filter that is for the refrigerator. So when you're done dewinterizing, you can put this in your fridge. 
And then this water filter here goes in the canister outside in the wet bay. Now you have two nice little pull-out pantries here with adjustable shelving. You have your residential refrigerator here. As you can tell, in the lines back there, it is winterized. There's pink antifreeze going through there. All you're going to do is run this, hit this button with a bucket here and run it till clear water comes out. Then you can open this up, pull that plug, and put your water filter in. Don't lose that blue plug because that bypasses this if you have to winterize it again. Then just your freezer here. Um, keep coming this way on the slide. Your table, if you pull on it, will extend. And then you push it back in the latch. Uh, this is the computer workstation. So right here, if we flip this down, you have your little tray for your laptop. And then storage here with another little pullout. And then storage underneath. And then just more storage over here. The nice thing on this countertop, you have an outlet over here, but also if you pull up on this, you have USB charging and 110 charging right in the counter with more storage up top. The dinette light, you can turn on and off with the push button here. And then the little sconce light above here. And then this light here. Another fire exit window here. Same, this one's big enough to go out, so you're just gonna release, pull, slide, pull the screen out. And then to go back, it's just push and latch. More storage here. Now all your windows do have a nightshade. And a day shade. Let's see. The little solar shades. Now this sofa here, there's a little lever. You're just gonna release the lever, lift for your sofa here, just gonna remove all this. These pop off. Now there are seat belts for this sofa that you can use while traveling. And then this just flips over like this to make your bed. And then to put it away, you're just gonna bring this back up lift up and then put the back cushions back on we're gonna go into the kitchen area now here you have your main ceiling lights you can turn on and off your entry light front accent lights which are along the floor along the ceiling up here your passenger ceiling lights driver side ceiling lights you can turn your water pump on your task lights in the kitchen and the vent lid in the kitchen you just hit the button for it to go up. Now here you can go in or out, set it by temperature, or three speeds. So if I put it up, the fan's not going. I hit the fan switch, the fan will turn on. Now if I leave that fan on, again, and I hit that, the lid will come down, the fan will turn off. You have your sink here, your hot and cold. Another soap dispenser here. Same thing, use a funnel to fill it, or you can open up. And there's a little bottle back here you can untwist. Now you do have sink covers here for your sink. And then you have a little silverware drawer, more storage here. Now you'll notice there's a little cubby right here. That's actually to store your sink covers on the side of the cabinet. Here's your stove top here. All you're gonna do is turn it to light and then spark it to light. Once it lights, you can let go and set the temperature. Uh, this is removable. If you wanna take this off, you can pop this to take it off. Otherwise, while you're traveling, you want this in a down position. Uh, you do have a microwave convection oven. 
Uh, so it bakes really nice. It uh, bakes a lot more even than the regular oven, RV ovens did. And then nice little storage here with pull-out tray. Dishwasher here. All right, right here is where your fluid's going to go. And then you can pick here what you want. And then you can hit the triangle button here to start it. Storage here and here. Now the nice thing with your dishwasher, there is a remote control to run it. This remote that says HD360 will run your TV antenna. Then all your TV remotes and your DVD player remotes are located right here. Now this whole cabinet here is a little latch. Just release and this will pull out. Now to get it to go back in, you have to pull it again to release to run it back in. Now you have storage up here. Right here is all the owner's manuals. Now there is a cushion right here, this little cushion. Everyone wonders what it is. This cushion goes right here to cover this little window. This is the only window in the coach that doesn't have a shade. So that goes there to block that while you're camping. And just more storage here and here. Now this is a sofa with an air mattress. So all you're going to do is remove these cushions here. There's a little lever somewhere. Lift up. This one also has seat belts. And you're just going to take this. And then it comes with an air pump. All you're going to do is take the pump and connect it right here. And it'll blow up your air mattress. Now when you want to drain the air mattress, all you're going to do is undo this. Release it so the air comes out. And then to put it away, as you're putting it away, it'll help push air out too. Because you're going to push this down. And when you do it, it's going to push and push the air out. You do have storage here on each end of the slide. storage here. Now, here you have your other two thermostats. This front thermostat is going to be for the front of the coach, which you have your AC, which is cool, gas heat furnace, electric heat out of the air conditioner. Now, in this Phaeton, you have a third air conditioner. This controller here is only going to do the third AC, which is the middle of the coach. So you're going to do cool, and electric heat. Even though it says gas heat, it does not have gas heat in this section. It's only going to be cool and electric heat. And then just more storage here with a little thing of touch up paint for every color of the coach. And then storage up here. On your televisions, your, all your TVs are going to work the same. Uh, this is regular TV here. Now, the nice thing is. If I hit the input button on my remote control, I can go to HDMI 1, which is your DVD player. And that's going to be the same on every single TV. And then if I hit input again, it'll give me the option for satellite, if you have a satellite receiver. The nice thing is you can watch satellite in the bedroom, DVD on the mid TV, regular TV antenna up here on the front TV, and then watch something else on the outside. So you have multiple different options. All off the remote control. Right here, there's an eye. All you're going to do is point at that to control your DVD player. Or if you have a satellite receiver, you don't have to go in the back to change anything. So same thing, go back to the TV. Now whenever you have TV or cable, and you're at a campground, whenever you get somewhere, you always want to go into the menu setting. And then you want to go to channel. And then you want to auto tune it. Every time you go somewhere, it's auto tune it so you get more stations. 
Here we can get up to almost 20 stations because we pick up our local channels plus some of the Canadian channels. So depending on where you're at, you may only get two or three channels. You could get up to 20, but you have to auto-tune. If you go, don't auto-tune, you may not get any channels. So that's very important, and you go around and do it at every single TV. Now located right here, you have some USB charging ports, a map light, a step cover, which is going to go out right here. So then when you're sitting in the passenger seat, you got a place to put your feet, and then you can run it back in. And then you have a fan on the passenger side. There's two speeds. You can turn it to blow on you. They're designed to go at the window to keep the windows from fogging up. Uh, your seat here, your armrest, you'll notice there's little levers. So when you tilt the seat back, you can release your arm less so to make it comfortable while you're sitting. Uh, power seat, forward and back. And then on this side, this one's the little recliner. And then there's a switch, a little lever in the front of the seat. You release that, and the seat will spin around. Then when you come back, it'll latch into place. Um, there's a switch panel over here. You have one button does your entry light, door light, main ceiling light, porch light, road light, which is above your wet bay on the outside. Your compartment lights, turn them on and off. Your door awning, extend, retract. Turn your step on and off, and then your master switch for your lights on and off. You have panel light switch, and you have a 12 volt battery switch. So if you just want to disconnect the 12 volt power to the inside of the coach, you can turn this button off. Little computer workstation in front of the passenger seat. USB 12 volt charging here. Then there's an auxiliary and USB port right here that's connected directly to the stereo. You have storage up here. This controller here is just telling you what's going on with your coach. So it's saying right now we're plugged into 30 amp, our battery's charging, our inverter, and everything that's got power to it. Just tells you what we're using. Now in this compartment is what up here is where you're gonna turn your satellite on or off which you have a in motion satellite. So you're just gonna turn it on. It'll automatically find the signal when you have your receiver hooked up. Here you have your passenger and driver side slide for the front of the coach. These two slides are hydraulic. And then you have your entry light here and then your awning switch for your patio awning here. Now up here you have your inverter panel. So if you're traveling down the road, you don't wanna run your generator, and you want to run your refrigerator, run your microwave, use your TVs, you're just going to hit invert, and that little light will come on, and then it'll convert your 12 volt power into 110 so you can use some of your appliances. It will not run your air conditioners, but it will run your microwave and your refrigerator. Now the other nice thing is you have a thing called AGS, which is automatic gen start. All you're going to do is hit that button, and then you're going to come here, push in. Right now we're off. What that is, if I turn this on, the enable, when my batteries get to a certain voltage, it's going to kick my generator on to charge my batteries, run for a little bit, and shut off. Now, whenever you're storing the unit in a building or you take it in for service, I recommend you turn that off so it doesn't start inside the dealership or inside the building you're storing it. Uh, so AGS is really good when you're dry camping or if you want to use stuff during the day, don't want to be running the generator all the time, but it will kick on to charge you up so you don't run your batteries down. Right here you have your heater controls for your AC or your dash heat. All you're going to do is set your temperature, turn to what you want, and then this button here is for air conditioning. Uh, you have a radio switch. So if you want to use your dash radio here without the keys in it, you can turn the radio and then the radio will come on. Now, the nice thing about this radio is it also navigation. You can set it up and it set it up like a motor home so it won't take you anywhere your motor home won't fit or can't go. Um, so we've got menu. 
Uh, you got navigation, CD, you can hook your telephone, your iPod. It is an HD radio, uh, which is really nice, so you get a few more channels. But if I hit navigation here, hit agree. Oh, right now we are set in RV mode. We hit save. So it's only going to take you where your RV can go. It's actually already got the width, length, height, and weight of the coach in there. Now you can use your GPS just like a normal GPS. Uh, you have a docking light, which are by your rear wheels and your front wheels. Map light for the driver. Generator start stop switch from the, on the inside of the coach here. Nightshade, which is the shade for the front window. Now while you're driving down the road, you can bring it down just a little bit to help block the sun. Otherwise, when you're camping, it comes all the way down to the dash. You have the night, and then you have just the solar shade, too. Here you have a, dry, a fan for the driver, and then you can also control the step cover right here on the passenger side. Storage here with a little cup holder. Located here is the microphones so while you're driving. If someone calls, that's what you're going to talk into right here. Now your steering wheel. You can telescope or tilt, so you can push it in or out and tilt. Um, your cruise control is located right here on the steering wheel. This is your high beams, wipers, high, low, and rinse, and then this is the ICC flash. What that is while you're driving, if you notice the truckers, how they flash your lights when they say you're good to go in, or if you want to let them in, you hit that, it's just going to flash your marker lights. Uh, over here is where... You're going to turn your headlight switch, your headlights on and off. And then this is going to dim your dash here. Engine preheat. So when that plug out back in the uh, passenger rear compartment's plugged in, you can turn that on. They preheat your engine. Auxiliary start. What that's going to do is if your chassis battery's dead, you hold this button down. It takes the power from your coach batteries to start your motor home. Pedal in and out. Uh, which is nice. I'm a short guy, so I like bringing the pedals to me so I'm not sitting on the steering wheel. Parking brake here. Up is on. Down is the release. Whenever you're driving a diesel motorhome, you're going to start the ignition. You're going to put it in. You're going to be in neutral. You hit drive. You're going to hit drive. And then push down to go. Whenever you stop and you want to go into reverse, you're going to hit neutral, then go into reverse. Uh, whenever you stop and you are going to park, it always goes into neutral, and then you lift up to set the parking brake. Biggest thing is make sure you set this parking brake. Worst thing is to go in somewhere and come out and see your motorhome rolled away because you didn't put your parking brake on. And if you don't put it in neutral, it will not restart until it's in neutral. Uh, this is mirror heat. Mirror controls left or right. It's only going to control the top portion of the mirror. The bottom portion of the mirror you have to do by hand. This is your engine exhaust brake here. What that does is when you're driving, you let off the gas. When that is on, it's going to start slowing you down so it's not you're not on your brakes all the time, especially on big hills, and you're not going to heat up your brakes. Then you switch here. If it's regular, regular horn, turn it on. Air horn. Right here is your jack controls. All you're going to do, these orange lights right here are saying we're on level. So to use your jacks, you're just going to hit auto level. Now as your jacks go down, these red lights come on. So what it does on auto level is it dumps the air out of the airbags first. Once that air is dumped, then it's going to run your jacks down. So the first jack's going down, second jack's going down. Now, while these are going down, the manual dump here, what that is, say you pull in somewhere, you can just hit manual dump and it just dumps the airbag out of the, the air out of the airbags so it lowers the coach down. Now, if you can't get level because your slope, your slope is excessive, this light will come on and tell you you have excessive slope and it won't level anymore. If you're not in park, it's going to tell you you're not in park. So as your jacks go down, you're going to hear a beeping noise. 
That's so every time you turn the key on, it's going to beep to tell you your jacks are down until they're up. So right now we are level, but it's putting the last jack down. Because if, if there's no orange lights on, we're level. So right now it's done because the lights stop blinking. But say it didn't give you completely level, you can take and manually do up and down, left and right until you're level. Now to put once you're done, you just turn that off. Your jacks are done. Now when you're ready to leave, you just turn the ignition key back to the on position and hit auto store and the jacks will go up automatically. So now up here on the dash, you have the green lights, that's your gauge for your DEF fluid. Then you have your diesel fuel. Now, the biggest thing with your fuel, when you get to a quarter tank, if you were running your generator, the generator is going to shut off. It will not let you run out of fuel. So if you run your generator and this goes down to a quarter, the generator is going to shut off automatically. And then you also have your gauge here for your miles per hour. And then you have two PSI gauges down here. These are for your airbags. One is the front. Two is the rear. If you're not up over 100 PSI, it's not going to let you release the parking brake. If you release it too early and it does get you and there's not enough air in the bags, it's going to feel like you're bouncing until you get enough air. So if that happens, stop. Give it a little gas while you're in neutral just to help bring up the air pressure. Now here you have a little pre-checklist. You can go through and just tells you different things to check before you leave. And if you hit the arrow button, It'll get you out of there, and it gives you your odometer, your time, and all that stuff, which you can go through, and you can keep going down, and it just you can check your transmission temp, your generator hours, and all that right here. Uh, that pretty much does it for the show through on the inside of the coach. Uh, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to run your slide outs in just to show you how they work, and then you'll be all set. Biggest thing is the key has to be in the on position. Once the key's in the on position and you've walked around, make sure nothing's in front of the slides or out underneath the slides, all you're going to do is you're going to hit the retract button for the passenger, and that's going to run this slide out in over here. And then we're going to do our driver's side slide. Now we're going to run our front slide outs in. Biggest thing is when you're doing your front slide outs, make sure your seats are forward. They're in front of this right here. You don't want to rip your seats on your slide out. Now the switches are located right here above the driver's seat. Now we're going to do the driver's side slide. We're just going to hit retract. They sound a little different because these ones are hydraulic. The ones in the rear are electric. And it is going to come up and then in. So it's going to look like it's tilting, but that's how they're designed. Oh, and then you just turn the key off. And that concludes your walkthrough on your 2014 Phaeton 40 QBH. Again, my name is Sean from Colton RV, and I congratulate you on your purchase of your motorhome. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 716-694-0188. Thank you.